The subject of this video is sugar derivatives that contain nitrogen, and these have a number of very important functions in biochemistry. You'll see a lot of monosaccharide derivatives containing nitrogen in your biochemical studies. And one important point to make here right off the bat is structurally and from a reactivity point of view, these are often highly analogous to the parent monosaccharides. It's important to recognize and, and see them as derivatives of monosaccharides. Don't let the nitrogen fool you, right? We made this point back when we talked about nitrogen analogs of carbonyl compounds in a laboratory context in organic chemistry too, right? A lot of the behavior and structure and even the functions of these nitrogen containing sugar derivatives are highly analogous to the sugars themselves. And we're going to start by looking at what are called the amino sugars. In an amino sugar, one or more of the OH groups at a non-anomeric carbon, a carbon that is not carbon-1, essentially, is replaced with an amino group, NH2. And the most important of these is known as glucosamine, and it's got an NH2 group at carbon-2. It's glucose otherwise, so it's got an equatorial NH2 and all equatorial OHs and equatorial carbon-6. So this is a derivative of glucose in which the C2OH group has simply been replaced with an NH2. Chitin is an important polymer of N-acetyl glucosamine, where that NH2 group in glucosamine has been acetylated to install this acetyl group in green, and then that sugar is polymerized, and this creates a highly rigid polymer. And if we think about the structure, it, it kind of makes sense that chitin is, is highly rigid, right? We're going to get potential hydrogen bonding out of that nitrogen. We're going to get some strong dipole-dipole forces. There are very strong intermolecular forces between the chitin polymer chains, and this creates the relatively rigid exoskeleton that we find in insects, for example. As you get into more uh, advanced biochemical studies, you'll see N-acetylglucosamine, abbreviated as GLICNAC. And GLICNAC as a monomer has a number of important applications as well. For example, in cell signaling, where it shows up on the cell surface and can tell cells in the environment about what, what's going on inside the cell where that GLICNAC is presenting itself. When the OH group at carbon-1 is replaced with, with a, some nitrogen-containing group, an amino group, a related structure, we end up with an N-glycoside. And we can talk about and readily understand the mechanism of formation of N-glycosides from the parent sugar by thinking about glycosidation. In essence, N-glycosides are made by glycosidating a nitrogen nucleophile. So for example, under acidic conditions or in the presence of a proton inside an enzyme's active site, we can protonate that anomeric hydroxyl and lose water to form this oxygen-stabilized carbocation that we're very familiar with at this point in the reactivity of carbohydrates. In the presence of a nitrogen nucleophile, well, nitrogen is a fantastic Lewis base, and it can add to the electrophilic anomeric carbon, and this establishes that bond between the anomeric carbon and nitrogen and gives us the N-glycoside. Now, it is very, very important as you move forward in your biochemical studies to recognize the nucleosides and nucleotides as in glycosides. The building blocks of DNA are nitrogen-containing sugars, sugars containing nitrogen. So RNA and DNA involve ribose or deoxyribose sugars with a nitrogenous base linked via nitrogen to the anomeric carbon of that sugar. So here, for example, we have ribose. Ribose is a pentose. Here we have deoxyribose, where the C2 hydroxyl group that we find in ribose is missing. And both of these can form bonds to nitrogenous bases at their anomeric carbons. And this gives rise to what are called the nucleosides, which include a nitrogenous base, the nucleophile in that glycosidic linkage, and either a ribose or deoxyribose sugar, which was the electrophile in formation of that glycosidic bond. And these will link up with phosphates to create the nucleotides, and of course polymerization of those gives rise to ribonucleic acid, RNA, and deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. So a case of nitrogen-containing sugars being extremely, extremely important. These N-glycosides are far and away the most important N-glycosides that you will encounter in studies of chemistry and biochemistry. 